So everybody, thanks so much for listening. If you're a first timer, please subscribe, share this interview. Nikhil Tosikar on, he, we're going to be talking about uh, bipolar disorder, stem cells, and everything else in the kitchen sink. Uh, Geostar, you can check out their website. Uh, we've done an interview about Geostar before. Definitely check it out uh, back in the YouTube videos. Nikhil, thanks so much for coming on. And we appreciate all the great work you're doing with Geostar and with stem cell research in general. Yeah, thanks for having me, Rob. It's really great to, uh, great to connect and great to be on here. But let's hear about your story in general. So uh, have at it, Nikhil. Yeah, sure. So again, thanks for having me on, Rob. Uh, so there is, this is one of those stories that has, uh, as they say, you know, like with an onion, you peel a lot of the different layers. Um, and I would say it really all centers around uh, mental health, uh, yeah. specifically around uh, what I would call the South Asian diaspora. So uh, people ask me what my ethnic background is because it's not readily apparent, but uh, I was born here in the U.S. Uh, my parents were born in India and uh, they came here in the 70s. And like a lot of immigrants, they really you know, busted their ass to live the American dream. You know, they were both doctors, very well educated, uh, really did well professionally, but I would say um, on the emotional front, uh, there were a lot of holes. And when I say that, I mean that there were a lot of things that were emphasized that I would say were not necessarily the best um, for my uh, long-term development. Uh, so I guess when you talk about upbringing, I mean, I was, I was fortunate in that you know, I went to good schools, had an upper middle class upbringing. Uh, but I would say that a lot of the wrong things were emphasized, um, meaning that professional achievement, I think, was the most important thing. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of times, it's interesting, my mom these days, um, she, would, she had a saying that, you know, when I was growing up, uh, stress didn't exist. And, you know, I, I find that an interesting thing because Stress is something that's been with us for, for eons, right? We just didn't, didn't necessarily have a name for it. Um, and so that sort of informed a lot of the way I looked at uh, mental health, which is, you know, I went to a good business school at the University of Chicago, uh, worked in consulting, uh, had a pretty good career, uh, but there was always something that was sort of, um, as they say, hiding in plain sight. Uh, and that would be uh, my mental disorder, which was uh, which is bipolar disorder. Uh, so I lived with that for more than two decades. You know, I had my first um, manic episode uh, when I was in college. I can go into what more of what that looks like at, you know later. Um, sure. But after my wife and I, Shelly, who was on the show, you know, after my wife and I got married, um, we had a very I'd say a happy marriage uh, for the most part. Uh, but there were these, I guess you could call them flare-ups that would present themselves every now and then, um, where emotionally there were, there were a lot of stressors that would come into play. And, you know, I would, I would be going for like what I considered like a pretty good clip for a while, you know, where I was very creative, working very hard, not sleeping much, creative. Um, but then I would crash, you know, and then it would be for like, so it would be something like six months, I'd be on a high. And then for like 12, 18 months, you know, I'd just be completely incapacitated. Wow. Um, and so for a lot of it, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just saying, wow, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the, the, the interesting uh, context that I need to add is that there's two aspects. One is uh, my father is actually a psychiatrist, or he is, he was a psychiatrist, he retired now. Um, and my mother, uh, really, when you look at the DSM listing of all the symptoms of bipolar disorder, she really uh, ticked off all the boxes, you know, in terms of uh, irritability, in terms of, you know, a lot of fluctuations in mood, in terms of not needing a lot of sleep. Um, but for whatever reason, whether it was denial or it was just an inability to see it, um, it was something that my father kind of brushed under the rug. And so a lot of the, these times when I was, uh, those were sort of seen as the real me. When in to see that now, I would, it would really, you know, the, the red flag would go up and I would say, okay, you know, we need to get, Nikhil needs to get some help or something like that. Um, but it wasn't until 2015, you know, when I, when it really came to a head, you know, I uh, filed for divorce uh, from my wife. 
um, you know, I just went, as they say, I just went off the rails. Um, yeah. And my wife and I, we had, uh, I had filed for divorce and, you know, was really ready to just end the marriage. Um, and it wasn't until I hit rock bottom and I saw that, you know, um, I lost another in a series of jobs. Um, you know, my health was in complete shambles. Uh, my, like I said, I had started a divorce proceeding, which was very expensive and it was estranged by family, uh, that I finally, I finally sort of waved the white flag because my wife had said, you know, you, there's something wrong with you. There's something wrong here. It's not that, not that you're a bad person, but you need to get checked out. And so finally, that was when I decided to uh, try it her way. Uh, so I voluntarily went in for inpatient treatment uh, in a psychiatric ward and got the diagnosis of bipolar disorder. And I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say everything is uh, hunky-dory and everything is perfect now. There's still challenges. Uh, but I would say the last six years have definitely been one of healing and progress. Uh, and I think it's because I was willing to acknowledge that there was an issue that needed to be addressed uh, head on aggressively. So how does someone find out that the other person has bipolar disorder? Like what are the traits, I guess we should say for bipolar disorder? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I mean, the thing is with bipolar disorder, any psychiatric disorder I think is really difficult to diagnose. And I, mm -hmm. my heart really goes out to clinicians because it's really tough when you only see an individual for an hour a week, you know, and so you're only seeing what is presented in front of you. Um, but with bipolar disorder, I would say in my situation, the challenge is just that a lot of patients who suffer from this condition, they won't go to seek treatment uh, unless, you know, until they crash. Because if you think about it, if you feel like you're on top of the world, you know, you're making all these friends, you're writing these blog posts, you're just very creative and you're the life of the party. Uh, I mean, why would you want to, why would you want that to end? You know, a lot of these patients who are going through these manic episodes, uh, they think the people who are raising the alarm bells are the ones who have the problem. You know, it's like, you're the one, you just can't get, understand my brilliance. Um, so I think it's really important with bipolar disorder. Um, if you're fortunate, like I was, if you're fortunate enough to have a care, I don't want to call her a caretaker, but a spouse or a partner or a family member who knows your history, you know, who has seen you through the highs and the lows, if mm -hmm. they can get involved in your treatment plan and present the uh, psychiatrist or the psychologist with the family history, then I think that's going to be very effective. Uh, but I think, you know, if you're looking for a list, a lot of the items that I ticked off earlier, you know, number one, um, not, not requiring a lot of sleep. Uh, second one I'd say would be the interpersonal with um, irritability. You know, it's difficult to ma maintain relationships because I think people with bipolar disorder, they tend to get, they tend to, what I would say is live in their head, you know, and a lot of times they tend to, if the person they're talking to or interacting with isn't getting it, then they tend to snap and they'll, you know, cut that relationship or, you know, they'll go through drastic measures. And then, yeah, I mean, I, I would say definitely the, you know, oscillating from the highs to the lows is, is definitely the, uh, the trademark uh, symptom. Um, but like I said, I mean, and, and the other aspect of it, I have bipolar one, there's four, there's four different categories. And I'd say the main ones like bipolar one, which is sort of like a more severe form. Bipolar two is more like it's, you know, there, it's more characterized by hypomania, which is more like in and out, you know, it, it can go anywhere from like a day to a couple of days. But for me, my manic episode lasted a, a whopping 18 months. So you can imagine the recovery was pretty prolonged, you know. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's incredible. And it's a story that people need to hear about because like you said, a lot of people just go on and they live with this stuff for years and no one wants to confront their spouse or friend or whoever it may be about this. Yeah. And in the end, they're just uh, hurting that person's life in general because they're living yeah. with this lifestyle, which maybe they could be helped with whether it's through medication, counseling, who knows. 
uh, depending yeah. on obviously, like you said, Nikhil, what, how severe this bipolar disorder is for the person. So we have a podcast called The Shelley Story. Um, and we toyed around with the name. <clears throat> I just feel like the Shelley and Nick story, it's too much of a mouthful. So even though it's, it's a little bit confusing because I'm the one who typically does the interviews, uh, oh. but the Shelley story is really, uh, it's a platform uh, for discussions about uh, mental health, primarily in the South Asian diaspora, primarily it's for people who come from countries like you know, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. Um, but it doesn't really end there because, you know, we've talked to people who are, uh, who grew up here, who are American. Um, and again, it's, it is related to mental health, um, but it's also talking about just owning your own health and not just looking to surgery, medication, or cognitive therapy to manage uh, stress, to manage bipolar disorder. Because as you know, I mean, we have Geostar Chicago, so we treat... Yeah patients with degenerative disorders, immune, autoimmune disorders uh, with stem cells. Uh, so we do talk to people, you know, we do talk to professionals. We talk to uh, the chief medical officer of uh, the Chopra, uh, Deepak Chopra's company uh, about how meditation can help uh, with mental health. Um, you know, we've talked to, it's interesting, we even talked to somebody who talks about like the Myers-Briggs uh, depression index. Um, we've talked, you know, it's, it's a whole host of topics, but really it's about um, you know, managing health and wellness. Uh, and a lot of it is informed by our shared experiences. And it, like I said, it's part of a platform that it talks about um, mental health, which also extends to our, uh, the book uh, that Shelly and I wrote and uh, the movie that we're uh, currently working on as well. So. Yeah, when is that movie going to come out, by the way? So we're looking uh, probably in 2023 sometime. Uh, she... Because I think, yeah, yeah go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just saying uh, with the, with these books and movies. I mean, a lot. It's it's always finding that fine, you know, finding that sweet spot between your vision, you know, what you like and what the audience, you know, what what the general public will like. You know, well, she mean, was so. telling me that she had somebody in Hollywood that was yep. going to invest in that. Is that still going on forward? Or uh, in terms of the investing, that's uh, that's. It's, it's just more we are working with uh, Hollywood producers on, on getting the film. Uh, getting oh, the film. okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. All mm -hmm. right, cool. All right, Nikhil. Well, I appreciate your time. Tell people where they can find the podcast, find more about you in general before we yeah, leave. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, so the podcast is uh, it's just the Shelton. The Shelly Story. T-H-E-S-H-E-L-L-Y Story.com. And then our uh, blog, which has, you know, which has the podcast and videos and, and some posts that Shelly's done is uh, ShellySued.com. Uh, and you can find us also on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google, uh, all the different uh, platforms. And we're also, uh, we have our social media channels as well. All right. All right. And it's the social media is the Shelly story. Oh, what? Yeah, we're on Twitter, uh, Instagram, and uh, Facebook, as well as uh, you can find us on LinkedIn. 